Vegas Pro 15 gives you the ability to rearrange the workspace to fit your personal workflow. Feel free to experiment with different layouts with the assurance that you can always get back to the default layout at any time. You may discover several different layouts that work best for different tasks. For instance, you might have different layouts for video editing, audio production, working with effects, and so forth. We'll learn how to create and save different layouts in a later tutorial. For now, let's make sure we're in the default layout. Choose View, Window Layouts, Default Layout. The workspace has two main areas, the window docking area at the top and the timeline at the bottom. The left side of the window docking area contains several windows that enable you to find your media, explore folders on your PC, and add transitions, effects, and media generators to your project. To bring focus to a window and bring it to the front, click its tab. You use the Video Preview window to view your project as you edit, and the Master Audio Output meters enable you to monitor the combined audio levels of all the tracks. The trimmer sits behind the Video Preview window. Click its tab to bring it forward. You can use the trimmer to preview your files and choose portions that you will use in your project. Click the Video Preview tab to bring that window forward again. The bottom of the workspace holds the timeline where you will place your media and edit your project. Back at the top, the application title bar shows the name of the current project and the version of Vegas Pro we are using. In the menu bar, click a menu item to access the menu options. In the toolbar, point to any of the icons and a tool tip identifies the button's function and the associated keyboard shortcut. Below the main toolbar, another toolbar holds tools specific to the open window. Click the tab of a different window and the toolbar updates to the tools associated with that window. Note that some windows, like the Video Preview and Trimmer windows, have a toolbar at the top and another toolbar at the bottom. The toolbar below the timeline also holds main project transport controls and various editing tools. Let's take a closer look at the timeline. To see all the details, we'll need to add some media. In the Project Media window, click the Import Media button, navigate to the folder on your system that holds the media you want to use, select a video file, and click Open. You now see the video file in the Project Media window. Drag the file to the timeline and snap it to the very beginning of the project. Notice that this automatically creates a video track and an audio track along with track headers that contain various controls and tools. You also see the first frame of the video in the Video Preview window. Click the Play button to start playback. Click the Stop button to stop playback. Notice that the cursor returns to its original position. Click the Play button again, and then click the Pause button. The Pause button stops playback, but instead of returning the cursor to its start position, this leaves the cursor on the frame that was showing when you click Pause. This illustrates an important difference between Stop and Pause. Just above the video event, 
The Time Ruler displays time in several different formats. Right-click the Time Ruler to display a list of time formats. Above the ruler bar is the marker bar. You use markers to mark important places or time ranges in a project for easy location. Press M to place a marker at the cursor position. Enter text in the marker text box to name the marker. Click somewhere else in your project to move the cursor to a new location. Press M to place another marker and give it a name. With the number keys at the top of your keyboard, press 1 to move to marker 1. Press 2 to move to marker 2. Drag through the marker bar to select a time range. Press R to create region markers to remember the time range. You can see the time at your project cursor in two different places. Press 1 to move your cursor to the first marker. The time display at the top of the track list shows the time at the cursor. The lower right corner of the interface also displays the time at the cursor. Press 3 to move to and select the region you set. In the lower right, you now see the time selection start, end, and length values. Double-click any of these fields to change the current value. We've seen that you can click anywhere in the timeline to place the cursor at that point. To scrub the video and audio in the timeline, you have several choices. Drag the playhead in the ruler bar to scrub forward or backward from the cursor position, to scrub both audio and video and find an edit point. Drag the scrub control at the bottom of the track list to shuttle forward or backward from the cursor position to find an edit point. This also scrubs both video and audio. Point to the cursor anywhere in the timeline. The mouse changes to a double pointing arrow. Drag either direction to scrub video only. To adjust the track volume, drag the volume fader left to decrease volume or right to increase volume. Watch the level in the master meter to make sure you do not go into the red and clip the audio. To adjust the project volume, the combined volume of all tracks, drag the master volume fader. Drag up to increase or down to decrease the volume. The Vegas Pro interface is easy to understand, and with the addition of the hamburger menu system, easy to keep clutter free and still have access to all the tools you need. We'll talk about those tools in the next tutorial.